Welcome to Hoopty Doodle, everybody. I want to give you a little update on the Grom, what's going on there. So, right now you can kind of see it over here, this guy. That's the Grom right there. And so, we've got some serious changes happening on this thing. The front wheel, I ended up changing out the front wheel and I'm going with a narrower front wheel. And while I was going narrower, I thought I would also go like bigger, taller. This is a 17 inch rim on that. And we've got the gnarly tire on there. Probably end up keeping the gnarly tire because it's functional. Why would you not use it? And this is what I'm super excited about is this guy. Ba bam We've got this all welded up. It is so awesome. My welds on here, I just finished taking a T class and my welds are nice. Like, I'm very modest typically, but I'm gonna say these are freaking nice, man. Like, check, check it out. We got some pretty welds on there, which is always my goal, basically, with this style of aesthetic that I do, basically, so far with this stuff, is that it's very rough and raw and you know transparent in the way it's built. I like that, that's the sort of thing I'm going for. It, it turns out to be sort of like a rat rotty thing a lot of time, but I'd like to up the game a little bit and actually have stuff that is well done and nice and pretty to look at all on its own and you can appreciate the craftsmanship. That is the goal ultimately, is to be able to do stuff nice enough that you can actually appreciate quality craftsmanship. That's what we're going for. So, and this hits that mark, in my opinion. So, I'm very happy with how this has turned out and I'm, I'm super looking forward to getting this on the bike, which we'll do right now. And you can see at the top here, we've got these guys capped off and everything. Pretty sweet, nice and retro. I'm loving this thing so far. It is super solid too. It's way overbuilt. It's looking badass. All right, so here is our basic suspension. This is where we're at right now in the craftsmanship fabrication process. What we've got here is our leaf spring up here, this is our suspension, this is our spring, and this works by being pulled down. And we need a link from here to the spring up here in order to make this thing work. The axle is back here for the wheel, and when we hit a bump, this thing will rotate that way, and this part here will rotate down, and it will pull that spring down. I'm trying to give it as much suspension travel as I can back here, so I'm trying to tilt this thing as far up as I can so that when it when it hits a bump it has a lot of travel to go you know we'll be able to go all of that all of like three inches it's gonna be awesome so one of the reasons I decided to go with a larger diameter front wheel here is because it helps to fill up this space in the front here this gap between the frame and this tire like it fills that stuff up more and it helps, in my mind, helps to balance this bike out a little bit more and give it the look I'm going for, which is I wanted it to be a little bit more of a compact looking bike. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. I'm really liking this suspension, building the front end like this. It is a lot of fun, dude. And this is the first one I've ever made and I am very happy with how this one's turning out. I have a lot of ideas, of course, on other ones I would like to do in the future. We're definitely gonna be making another front end like this. So I've still got a couple videos yet in my pocket that I've yet to put out because I'm trying to make them the best videos I can, make them a more full video with all the information in one video. And so that is this leafer front end. We're gonna have a whole video on that, building a leafer suspension from scratch. And then we also have the gas tank video, which we've totally finished the gas tank at this point, but I wanna get it all together and get it on the bike so you can see the finished product. So I've got a couple of videos like that that we're waiting until the bike is all put together to finish those videos and have them come out. I just wanted to give you an idea of the thrilling things that are going on around here because I'm really excited about this front end. I don't know if I mentioned that. So it is coming together and we've got the handlebars I'm gonna do next. And the other thing that I'm trying to do sort of in the interim, I'm just waiting for some parts to show up, is a video on making some really cool turn signals. I think they're gonna be really nice. And basically, 
their Moto Gadget turn signals. If anyone's familiar with that company, they make probably the best turn signals in my opinion, but they're also uh, expensive. So I have never bought them, but I like the design and I just recently figured out, I think I can make something very similar to that. So that's what I'm trying to do. For better or worse, I'm gonna put a video out because it's an idea um, I've not seen anybody else do and I think it might open the door for some other people to make their own and maybe make them better than what I'm gonna be doing. But I'm hoping mine are gonna turn out really well and if that's the case, I'll be using them on my bikes from now on probably because they're awesome. Look forward to that. That should be coming up sooner because I'm just waiting for some parts and then we'll be able to finish that video up and hopefully have something really cool to show you. So thanks for watching this build series on this Grom because I think it's gonna be a pretty cool bike. I, as we get closer to the end here, I'm getting happier and happier with how this thing is turning out. And this whole project here, putting this Grom together, has been an experiment in trying to push the limits of my skills and increase their capacity, essentially. Increase my skill capacity so that I can do other stuff in the future. And a lot of these are first for me. First time I built a gas tank from scratch. First time I built a frame. First time I built a front end. And those are all major pieces of a motorcycle. And because these things are first, it is taking me a lot longer to make them than I anticipated or wanted to spend on this. But the beauty in it is that these are big skill building opportunities. And because I've, I've gone through that bottleneck wherever of the frustration and all the hard work and the mental yeah, strain of figuring out how to do that stuff. Coming out the other end, I now have this base knowledge in my little brain, my noggin, that will allow me to, to do the same sorts of projects in the future or similar sorts of projects and do it better and quicker next time. But also like there's a synergy that goes along with skills, whatever, right? Where you have, like I've done a leather seat on this bike and that is cool, but that like opened the door to like leather work and leather crafting for me and now I'm like, whoa, Look at all this cool stuff I can make out of leather. And now I can combine with these skills I now have, I can combine metal work and leather work and psh, psh, synergy and that's really cool. All of a sudden I could do stuff that fewer and fewer other people could possibly do because I'm combining multiple skill sets together. Like that's, it starts to get wild, you know? And one of my hopes for this channel is that it inspires other people to push themselves, to challenge themselves, to develop different skills, to try new stuff, you know, cause it's just, it's good for your brain and it's it's fun, I think. It's fun to have, go through that challenge and it's highly rewarding when you push yourself to the finish line and end up with something in your hand, a final product that you've made and I mean, how can you not love it? And I also wanna thank everybody cause we've recently reached 10,000 subscribers on this channel, which to think that there are 10,000 hoopty doodlers would be ridiculous because nobody calls himself a hoopty doodler. One of the things that I, my goals for this channel is to inspire other people to do cool stuff. Conversely, it's inspiring to me when people tell me that my video was helpful to them or they really appreciated it or whatever. And th those sorts of things like help me continue to make videos. I love those comments. So. Thank you very much for sending them my way. It really does mean a lot to me that someone finds enough value in what is happening here in Hoopty Doodle to subscribe to the channel. Um, and I appreciate that, so thank you. I post a lot of stuff on Instagram as well. All this stuff, sort of behind the scenes stuff, like as I'm doing it, you'll see photos, little snapshots of it on Instagram. So if you are, if you're ravenous, rah, you know, go check me out on, on Instagram. It's at Hoopty Doodle, of course. And yeah, man, I uh, hope everyone's having a great time this time of year and everything. I hope everything's going well. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting on the videos. Thanks for your support in general. I really appreciate all that stuff. So we'll see you next time. Keep on wrenching your own projects and thanks for watching.